who will stay and who will go. There's a new article this morning by Roll Call that lists the most vulnerable members of Congress, those who are least likely to be reelected this November. Now, they span from coast to coast, and let's see who had made that unfortunate list. Joining me right now is politics staff writer for Roll Call, Shira Toplitz. Shira, okay, let's, there are four races in particular that you're going to focus on this hour for us. Let's start with Republican right. Congressman Gary Miller of California. He is an example of what you wrote about how redistricting has caused a majority of the challenges to incumbents so far. Yeah, absolutely. And Gary Miller is in a very unique case because basically his district that he currently represents no longer exists. So he's basically picked up and moved to a completely new district. Not a single square foot of his old district is in the new district where he's running in. Now, if that isn't a big enough challenge, it's also a 58% Obama district. That is not good news if you're a Republican seeking re-election. All right, next up, let's move to Republican Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois. He said you lied to the president, as you might remember. He's pulled upsets before. But again, he's facing a new district made for a Democrat. Absolutely. And I have three words for you, Richard. Child support lawsuit, okay? If uh, redistricting wasn't bad enough to he's this guy, that. he is running in a predominantly Democratic district. He's also had these terrible headlines in the Chicago press, an expensive media market, by the way. So this is the press people are seeing about him. It's all about this lawsuit for $100,000 in child support back payment. That's not good news for Joe Walsh. Okay, so that's who Republicans were looking at. Let's move to some Democrats that, are in this case, where mm -hmm. there are also some new district lines that aren't helping them. Uh, we got Congressman Larry Kissel, for example, North Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the big wave of 2010 basically skipped over, the big GOP wave, rather, basically skipped over North Carolina. A lot of Democrats held on there when their colleagues, Democrats, and other races lost. And one of those is Larry Kissel. Now, to give you an idea how bad the line drawing was for Democrats in North Carolina, two North Carolina Democrats have already just decided not to seek re-election. They'd rather bow out than try and run again. Larry Kissel is not one of them. He's going to stick by, and he's going to try to win in a much more difficult district. And I'll also note that the convention is coming to Charlotte next year. And I don't know how popular the president will be there in North Carolina, but we'll see. We'll see how close Kissel gets to the president uh, next uh, September. And how that'll work out. You know, also, I you know there, exactly. this list has been around for some while. You, you don't really don't want to be on it in terms of the most vulnerable exactly. uh, for a decade. This is a person who's actually been able to survive for a good 10 years on your list, and that's Democratic Congressman Jim Matheson of Utah. Yeah, absolutely. Matheson has been on our list before, and he has survived. He has made it through uh, each cycle. He's a Democrat in Utah, all right? That's a very difficult venture, but he has stuck by. He's a blue dog. He's done well. Well, they redrew the lines. They made his district a lot more difficult than it was two years ago. And plus, if Mitt Romney is the nominee and he's on the national ticket, a huge Mormon population, Utah would be very excited about a Mitt Romney nominee that will only boost Republican turnout in that state and make things even more difficult for Matheson. So, Sherry, you outlined Line 10, we discussed four here, all said when you're doing your research on this, who's more vulnerable, vulnerable if I can say that, this election, Democrats or Republicans? You know, it's kind of a draw in many ways. Uh, I think you'll see on our list, we, it's pretty even, our big list of 10 uh, between Democrats and Republicans. A lot of these members were just thrown into new, unique circumstances because of redistricting. But that you do have some cases, like Joe Walsh, who had other problems that made him vulnerable this cycle. I think in the end, my opinion on this is I think Democrats will pick up a couple seats. I don't think they're going to take back the House majority in uh, November, but I think they'll pick up a couple seats. Still on the whole, I think a lot of uh, some Republicans are going to lose seats, and some Democrats are going to lose seats come November. All right, the balance of power in question. You're saying just a couple of seats going to the Democrats. Thank you so much, Sheriff Toplitz. Thanks for having me. All righty. And you can check out the full list posted on our Facebook page and in roll call as well. Thank you, Sheriff, again.